Oh, Going down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, All right, now there's a, a bank by the harvester that we're defending. Oh, Chinese food is here. Perfect timing. Be right back. <laughs> Ask him if you can pay him in in-game credits. <laughs>Yo, what's going on guys? Hopefully everybody's having a good day. So I've been meaning to do this for a while and I knew I wanted to do this from the very beginning. I just wanted to make sure that I played Frontier Defense enough so that I could build a real solid opinion so I, I could understand it and feel confident about doing this. So this is my somewhat of a guide or tips and tricks video for people who need help or for people that are trying to improve for people that are having trouble with their current difficulty level in frontier defense and you just want to get better i understand this is not for everybody there are some of you who are much better than me there are some of you who are destroying the master and insane difficulty and props to you i respect that this video is more directed or geared towards people who are looking to improve who are having trouble understanding everything that's happening and i'm just trying to help people improve so if you decide to continue listening to this video even if you don't think it really applies to you i appreciate it and i would like for you to actually help me out here and if i forget something if there's a very important tip that you think i really should mention please feel free to leave that down in the comments i would like this video to be almost some sort of a central hub for people to come together and really just get better i want more people to improve in frontier defense i think it's a lot of fun and i know there's a lot of people out there who are just frustrated because they feel like they're stuck in a rut and they're not getting any better so hopefully this helps people i appreciate you guys watching this might be kind of random because i wrote down pretty much anything i could think of in the past few days for anything that i think is a general tip or a trick or just something that I think that some people might not know and then maybe you'll hear it and be like wow that actually makes a lot of sense so it might seem very random because I'm literally just reading off of a list I'm gonna try my best to structure it as best as possible but just in advance I apologize if some of these things are kind of out of place I'm just pretty much saying anything I can think of that I think will help any of you improve so the first thing I feel like I have to mention and this applies to regular multiplayer as well with PvP or attrition or anything like that but especially in Frontier Defense use your minimap look at it all the time it is so important there's a lot of vital information that people seem to miss quite often there are times where i'll look at the minimap and i'll see that there's like three or four reapers getting very close to our harvester i'll call that out and all of my teammates will be like way ahead of me so far away and they all turn around at the same time as if they had no idea so that tells me that a lot of people are just completely ignoring that minimap and you really really shouldn't it tells you literally everything it shows you all your enemies you can see their little icons moving you can see where they're going to attack so you can plan ahead it is so important make sure you start using that minimap all the time i know there's going to be somebody in the comments like iniquity there is no mini map on insane mode but like i said this video is not for you it's for every other person that's looking to improve and if you're playing anything other than insane difficulty that mini map is there for you to abuse for you to utilize do it it is very very helpful sticking to the same subject don't only use the minimap for yourself, use it for your team. Let's say you're too busy, you're in the middle of a fight with three new titans who, if you don't stop them now, they're going to get very close to your harvester, but at the same time, you see on your minimap that two mortar titans just spawned up. Make sure you call that out to your team, communicate with them, let them know what's happening because they might be too busy themselves to understand what's happening on the minimap, but the fact that you call that out now, everybody knows, okay, as soon as I kill this reaper here, I'm going to go after that mortar titan, and it helps a lot. And obviously, that brings me to my next subject, which which is communicate, use your microphones, use your headsets. It helps so, so much to just say what's happening, say what you're doing. Even if you just say, I'm going to go kill that mortar titan. Now everybody knows I don't have to go after it because he's going to take care of it. You don't want everybody doing the same exact job. So telling everyone what you're doing helps them a lot. It is very vital information. I understand some people don't want to use their microphones at any cost. So if you really don't want to talk to people, that's fine but at least listen to the other people that are speaking and trying their best to communicate with you. There are so many times where my harvester shields are getting destroyed, so I have to fall back and fight everything that's attacking it, and then I ask for help. I'm like, guys, fall back. There's three nuke titans about to hit the harvester, and everybody just, it looks like they completely ignore me. They don't even turn around. I'm looking at the mini map to watch them react, and they just stay on the far end of the map, nowhere near the harvester, and I'm wondering, are they just ignoring me to troll? Do they just not care? Or can they not hear me? 
That's always something that I ask myself, and it happens so often. Pay attention. Just pay attention to what's going on. Even if you really don't want to speak yourself, at least listen to everybody else. Fall back if you hear somebody say, fall back. They most likely mean it. The next thing I want to mention is that each wave on any map or any difficulty is designed to a T. It's not randomized. The game doesn't just automatically or randomly choose something like, hey, let's just drop 17 mortar titans out of nowhere. It's not based on a random code. Respawn has very specifically designed each encounter. So the reason I'm saying this is because with repetition and practice, little by little, you'll learn how to master these maps or improve on them. For instance, I think it's the second round on regular mode on Homestead, a bunch of drones fly from the back of the map in the field towards the middle section and they all head towards the the harvester so instead of just running around randomly as if you have no idea what's going to happen use this information to your advantage it's like you can have a ronin placed right in the middle and he can slice and dice he can one shot all those drones instead of for instead of him chasing all the drones randomly as he looks at them on the mini map he can just stand in the field before the round even really starts and just be ready for them you can have somebody behind him just in case ronin misses some stuff a guy on the left a guy on the right actually shooting these things are very easy to plan once you understand exactly exactly the way they're going to play out or going more in depth on this let's say you fail an attempt on regular or hard or whatever difficulty and you're having trouble with it and you're you're not understanding why you can't beat it the reason is most likely because you're trying the same exact method you need to change it up Pay attention to how things spawn and use that to your advantage. Let's say you know four titans, four mortar titans are spawning on the right side and they were destroying your harvester because you guys keep taking too long to go attack them. Use that to your advantage on the next attempt. You can tell a Ronin, hey, around this minute mark, wait on the right side and you chase after those mortar titans and take them down as quick as possible. If you're having trouble with like nuke titans coming from the middle lane and destroying the harvester before you guys can actually defend it, tell a Scorch to watch that lane and have his cannon is ready for them or a tone to drop his shield and try and aggro that damage away from the harvester so that they pay more attention to him there's just a lot of different things you can change around and prepare yourself for by understanding where your enemies are going to spawn i know it's not the easiest thing to memorize all this stuff but just try and pay a little bit more attention to it because it'll definitely help you in the long run i promise the next thing I want to say, and I feel like I say this 20 times a day like every other game when I'm playing with people, is use your money. Spend your money on upgrades. Buy some stuff. I understand some people like to donate, and that's cool. If you want to donate to somebody so they can buy a Harvester Shield Boost or whatever it's called, then I'm all for that. That's really cool. It's it's good that people can cooperate like that. But I also, there's this times on like wave four or five, I look at the scoreboard. I see that I have two sentries up. Somebody else has two sentries up, and the two other guys have no sentries trees no mines no nothing and i'm just like what are you spending your money on you didn't donate that much i know you can afford it so that tells me that you're either hoarding way too many points and not doing anything with it like you think it's not that big of a deal or you're spending all your money on amped weapons maybe you're dying too much we'll talk about that in the future or you're buying a lot of amped batteries which is not what you want to do look at it this way it's not the end of the world if you lose your titan because all you need is a archer missile or a thunderbolt for about 20 seconds of shooting titans you'll get your next titan back it is that simple if you just practice don't spend two thousand dollars on amped batteries just to keep that one titan alive it's not that important because it's very simple to get your titans back in frontier defense right now the game allows every single player to have two sentries placed out on the map and i feel like every single game should have four players with those two sentries not enough people are taking advantage of this, and those sentries, if you really practice or really take the time to learn where to place them, the best spots to place them, they can be so helpful. I've had games where my sentry turrets had 70 kills, and it's like, holy crap. If my sentry wasn't there getting those 70 kills, that means I would have to do extra work myself. So it's nice to just have free kills and free points that you really don't have to work for. You just pay $1,200 and that sentry does it for you. It is so worth it. So pretty much make sure you spend your money. Don't donate too much just because you feel like it's not necessary to spend it yourself. But if you are spending that money, make sure you spend it wisely and you're not just buying batteries over and over again. And sentry turrets aren't the only useful defense. You can do some experimenting with arc traps. There's some lanes where those things really help you control it so much easier. They're very useful. Nuke rodeos are also useful. Basically, just experiment with everything. Don't just spend it on batteries. The next thing I want to go over that I think is very important is please 
spread out. Look at your mini map. If you're next to your three of your teammates, change where you're standing. Go somewhere else. You don't all need to be bunched up all the time. Yes, this is a teamwork game and you have to work together to kill waves of enemies, but that doesn't mean that at all times you all have to attack the same enemy. It doesn't work out that way. It's much easier if you delegate positions and you're all in different parts of the map. So if you're on the far left side of forward base Kodai, you look at your mini map and you see a nuke titan spawning on the far right, but you already see a teammate running towards that titan or two teammates. That means you don't need to go there. It's no offense to you, but they probably don't need your help to kill that one or two titans there that means now you can focus on the titans about to spawn on the left side or the middle lane at least just try your best to keep track of where your teammates are and just don't bunch up unless you absolutely have to there are certain times where you need to team shot a certain enemy like an arc ronin coming towards your harvester or you need to destroy a nuke titan as soon as possible that i understand but most of the time you don't all need to be making out with each other basically to win the game it's not that serious next up i would love to talk about the titans or more specifically the roles of each titan the the general guideline you want to follow depending on what titan you choose i'm not saying if you don't follow this guideline you're a terrible player and you're doing your team a disservice you scumbag i'm not going that far it's not that serious but there's there's definitely a preferred play style or things to look out for depending on which titan you choose Again, I want to reiterate that you don't have to follow these guidelines 100%. I'm not saying that. For instance, you might have three of your teammates dead. You have like 20% health left on your Harvester. And there's a Mortar Titan on the opposite end of the map who, if he hits your Harvester two more times, you're going to lose the game. Your teammates are in that spawn section or spawn phase. So you're the only one that can stop that Mortar Titan. Then I understand. Even if you're a Legion, even though it's going to take long as hell and you're slow as crap, you have to get over there and stop it yourself because no one else can. That's totally fine. There are certain situations that you just have to throw the rule book out and say, F it, I'm going in. I get that. But in general, overall, there's definitely certain things you shouldn't be doing or things you should be doing because of the Titan you chose at the beginning of the game. For instance, you guys know I play Ronin like 80% of the time because I love being that roaming titan. I love when Mortar Titans come out, I'm calling it out. Like, those are mine. I'm going to kill all of them. When I have my core, I'm running all over the map. Like, literally, my Aegis upgrades allow me to dash across the map in two seconds. It is ridiculous. I am made to be a roamer. But it doesn't make sense when I turn around and there's a scorch in my back pocket like <laughs> hey iniquity let's let's kill this guy together <laughs> like i understand it is sometimes possible to roam with any titan you want but it's not the most efficient way to play so let's say you are a fantastic legion who has most of his aegis upgrades you are a tank you are a literal walking tank you have the power you have the range you have the health to just stay in one lane at the very end of it and destroy and melt anything that decides to come your way i've seen people absolutely obliterate sides of the map because they're just staying there with their legion and just aiming down sites ready to dominate and it's awesome you feel like a badass doing it so i'm not saying you can't roam around as that titan but you'll definitely have more fun and you'll do more for the team if you stick to that desired role that goes both ways though i've seen ronins stay back and play defense at the harvester like homie what are you doing well i got sword block up so i'm gonna stop anything that comes my way iniquity i'm here for the team no you're not <laughs> so yes i appreciate you trying to play defense but if that's what you want to do, you want to play defense at the Harvester, that's great. But you chose the wrong Titan to do it with. There's stronger Titans who can do that, like Scorch. He can place down traps for any stragglers that get by. Scorch is that type of Titan. He's that type of tank that if anybody tries to come in this certain zone, they're getting wrecked. Now, I don't want this video to turn into a guide for every single Titan and how to play them best. I'll most likely make separate videos for each Titan on Frontier Defense. But just in general, just keep that in mind. There's definitely certain roles for each Titan Actually, if you hover over them in-game, it'll tell you what their role is. It'll say tank, there's offense, there's roamer. For Ion, I believe it says roamer slash offense, which is definitely makes sense because I've been playing as Ion a lot lately, and she fills that roamer role, but she's not as aggressive as Ronin. But we'll talk about that more in the future when we go more in-depth on every Titan. Just keep that in mind. So I have no problem if you want to have two roamers on a team. That's cool. But don't make your two roamers Scorch and Legion. You know what I'm saying? Just understand where each Titan is best and play to that role. Play to those strengths and help your team in the long run. The next thing I want to go over that I think is pretty important, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. In every fight that you're in, whether it be against a Titan, a Reaper, some Cloak Drones, whatever, understand how important that fight is right now. And I don't know if this makes sense, but what I mean is, let's say I'm fighting 
a scorch at the very end of the map on the very far left side of war games and then my teammates yell at me iniquity we need your help we're getting overrun at the harvester i know that if i leave this scorch here even though he has like he's like half health he's not going to be that much of a threat if i just leave him alone for a little bit and retreat back to base to help my teammates understand that because there are sometimes i'll call for help like please back off we need some help at the at the harvester and people won't make a move because they're fighting someone else and it's like you don't need to continue that fight they're not going to be a threat until they actually get to the harvester it's not like they sprint towards your base but iniquity this tone only has like 20 health left and you like to watch tones die iniquity i don't care <laughs> let him live and take care of what's most important i hope that makes sense i think i'm getting that across correctly but un just understand the value of each fight do you really need to kill that titan right now always look at your mini map and figure out what needs to die right now what is the biggest threat take care of that first but iniquity some tones in the game are considered snipers and they, they don't have to get close to the harvester to do damage to it so what then <laughs> that's what i mean in this whole situation understand the value of your current fight so sometimes yes you can't actually stop that fight because you have to take care of that sniping tone i totally get it watch him die it feels damn good to kill every single tone in frontier defense <laughs> the next thing is pretty quick but it's definitely important I thought this was common sense, but obviously not. I've been playing nonstop for the past few days, and I've seen a lot of people completely ignore callouts or completely ignore the fact that Mortar Spectres and Mortar Titans even exist. It baffles me. So I understand if I play as Ronin, then yeah, it's pretty easy for me to run to one side of the map and kill a group of Titans that are Mortars. But there are certain maps, I believe Blackwater Canal, War Games, maybe another one, where Mortars drop on different ends of the map, and I can't kill them all at the same time, so I'm going to need some help. There have been situations where I'll ask for help and I'll be like can someone else get that and nobody is paying attention to the radar nobody's paying attention to call outs and our harvester ends up taking a crap ton of damage because those mortars are left alive and it's the most annoying thing in the world it's because it's so easy to take care of if you just pay a little attention to the mini map just look for that missile icon that'll tell you that those mortars are getting ready it's like a little wind up it's a clock animation or something it lets you know how close they are to firing off those mortar missiles just Never ignore them. Kill them. They're pretty easy to kill. Sometimes you have to get out of your Titan and jump on a rooftop because the Spectres will like hide from you where they're shooting mortars. But it, it's pretty easy to take care of. Just pay more attention to it. And then we have Reapers. Now, they're pretty easy to kill. They're not that big of a threat unless a bunch of them get close to your Harvester. But the ones that I'm putting emphasis on are the ones that jump on top of buildings, the ones that go on rooftops of, like, war games, let's say, and they start growling and beating their chest like Godzilla or King Kong. Those are the ones you want to kill immediately because if you let them live, they continuously spit out ticks or spicy boys and that will make a bad time for you so make sure if you see those reapers i believe they jump up on top of a building and then it looks like their chest rips open those are the ticks coming out you do not want to let those guys live for that long kill them immediately i'm looking at my notepad and i have this next thing written in all capital letters with exclamation points so i remember it now i was pissed off a few games ago Everybody was roaming, and I've already mentioned that. We shouldn't have four roamers, but the main reason is because we now have no defense. And I'm not saying we should have an actual literal defender. I'm not saying you need a goalie sitting on top of the harvester like, Come and get me! I'm here! I'm the last line of defense, Iniquity! You don't need someone that dedicated, but you definitely need two or at least one person that's more defense-minded. Someone that's paying more attention to the minimap closer to the harvester. Because if you have everybody just running around like chickens without a head, eventually something is going to get through. And you're going to hear that sound or draws telling you our harvester shield is getting dominated. And you're wondering, like, w w how? Is no one paying attention? I look at the mini map and every single person is sitting in my back pocket. I turn around and they're smiling. Hey, Iniquity, what's up, man? We killed those tones, huh? Yeah, we got them real good. So delegate someone to play defense, or if you're playing a Titan that can fill that role, play defense yourself. Again, you don't have to literally stand on top of the harvester and just wait for things to come your way. Just be more aware about it. That's all I'm asking. Now, this next tip, it's not the end of the world if you decide not to follow it, but it definitely helps out a little bit. I've been doing it in my games recently. The first wave, where you get that Titan at the very end and everybody starts spamming it with your rockets or thunderbolts and you kill it real fast, that's all fine and dandy. But what you could be doing is have every single person, all four players, rodeo that Titan and get a free battery. So I know one battery isn't going to change the outcome of a match, but it definitely helps. It's nice to have that, what is it, 20% extra core charge and an overshield for your first Titan that you call out. It'll definitely help 
help you with some extra survivability. Also, if you trust yourself as a pilot with your movement and you know how to dodge some attacks, let's say you are in a Titan and you're surrounded by a bunch of enemy Titans, you're doomed, you have to eject. Instead of immediately running away or taking some cover, once you eject, why don't you land on top of another Titan and take their battery? Now you can give that to a teammate and give them some extra shields, or you can hold on to it in your back pocket and use it for your next Titan. Having an extra core charge or overshield is always beneficial, so I just thought I would mention that. This next thing is going to sound stupid, <laughs> and it's going to sound like common sense, but try and not die so much. Play for your life. I get how weird that sounds. Iniquity, I always play to live. You think I want to die? I get that no one actually wants to die. No one's doing it on purpose, but you can tell that some people are playing way too reckless because they die over and over again. Play for your life. If your Titan is doomed and you're one shot away from getting destroyed... Stop trying to get that extra damage in and just eject. Play safe because that respawn process is so long. If you're playing as a pilot and you take some damage, instead of trying to shoot off that last thunderbolt, take some cover, let your health regenerate, and then take the shot. Play more safe. Every second in Frontier Defense counts. So every second that you're spending in that dropship, you're wasting time and you're making your teammates wonder, like, what the hell is this guy doing? Why is he always dead? But also keep in mind that you, if you do die and there's no way around it and you're in that dropship coming back down to the Frontier, you're also allowed to shoot from the dropship. So if you have the Thunderbolt, you're in the perfect situation. Just look below you and shoot it wherever you see the most Titan. Start building that core meter as soon as you come back to life. And this next tip goes back to communication, and I just have this written down. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And this goes for many things. One thing, one important thing being the bank. Let's say you know somebody has their two turrets already, and maybe it seems like they're not spending their money on anything else. Just ask, hey, does anybody have an extra 400 bucks? I'm trying to buy that Harvester Shield upgrade just in case things get crazy. People hear that and they're thinking, you know what, we probably do need one of those. Let me give my money to this guy. Or does anyone have an extra 100 bucks because I'm trying to amp my weapon? I just died last round. I would love to have my weapons amped again. Just don't be afraid to ask for it. This is a game that requires communication, so it's not the end of the world if you show that you need some help. Or if you're on the corner of a map, there's three titans left, you feel like you're getting overrun and you're about to die. Tell somebody that, hey, there's three titans here, I could really use some help. I'm sure somebody in the lane next to you, as soon as they finish killing whatever they're killing, they'll come over and help you because it was sincere. You asked for the help and everybody just wants to win. People have no issues helping each other, but they don't know that they need to help you unless you tell them. The other day I was playing with Butterbar, Jerdude, and Tony Mo, and Jerdude started asking me for dating advice. And I had no issue helping him out with the situation while I was killing Tones. It was the best thing in the world. Love the guy. Now, this next tip is another one of those things that's not going to make or break your game, but I think it's worth it to keep in mind, and that's don't always go for executions, and I mean Titan executions. I understand you feel like a badass when you're doing it, the animations are dope, but sometimes they just take way too long, and I said this before, every second in Frontier, in frontier Defense counts. It's so important. So there are situations where there's 50 Titans on the battlefield, and they're getting closer and closer to your Harvester, but you're executing every Titan one by one. You are wasting so much time. So if you see a Titan that's doomed, if you have the ammo, shoot him. Destroy them immediately instead of dashing, wasting your dashes, wasting more time and taking more damage just so you can hit the melee button and get the execution. Just kill them as soon as possible. But Iniquity, what if I'm Monarch and I'm using Energy Thief? What then? Exactly. That's why I said this is not going to make or break the game. Sometimes different situations call for different actions. If you are a monarch or you have a friendly monarch next to you, let them get the execution or take the execution yourself so you can get that battery and build some more upgrades for yourself and have an overshield. Now, there's another variable in this. If you see a Titan that's very, very weak in front of you, but you also see a friendly Titan, a friendly Ronin that has his sword core, let that Ronin get the kill. Because most of us Ronins right now are using Highlanders. So every time we kill an enemy Titan with our core, our core meter refreshes and we get to slice and dice more enemies. And in the end, that's going to help the team. Trust me, look at my last video for proof. It is bad ass. Now let's say it's waves 2, 3, 4, or 5, and you're forced to get out of your Titan, you lost all your health, and you're forced to be a pilot again. Make sure you spend as little time as possible as a pilot, and you're immediately looking to get your next Titan. I see in a lot of rounds way too many people as pilots for the entire thing, and it's, it's like they don't care about having a Titan anymore. They're not trying to get their Titan back. Titans are so powerful in frontier defense i understand you might have seen some streamer play as a pilot only in frontier defense but he was probably playing on easy or regular mode <laughs> and he probably could have done a lot better with that titan so while it might be possible to play as a pilot i'm not saying it's not 
it's more efficient and it's better for the team in the long run to get your Titan back as soon as possible. I also hear a lot of the times people like, hey, I've got a battery. Who needs it? Do you need it? What's your health looking like? What's your situation over there? Do you want this battery? Stop spending so much time as a pilot looking for who needs batteries. If you have an extra battery, you want to give it to somebody, go to the person that's right next to you and give it to them. It's always going to help no matter what. Just get your Titan back. I can't emphasize that enough. This next thing is not really a tip, but more of a plead or a suggestion. Stop quitting out of games. And it's not just for Frontier Defense, it's for regular multiplayer or just life in general. If things don't go your way, that doesn't mean you have to immediately quit and look for the next thing. You will never, ever improve that way. Just try and understand what went wrong. Learn from your failures. Try not to ruin the experience for everyone in your party or the next guy that's getting backfilled into that late game. People hate quitters. Don't be that guy. You're being that guy right now. Don't be that guy. Now, I want to talk a bit more about the defenses that we're able to buy. We already went over the batteries and how I'm, I don't think it's the best thing in the world to continuously buy battery after battery. But I'm also, I don't want you to think that they're worthless. Sometimes it is useful. You might have Wave 5 coming up next and you don't want to start off as a pilot. And you have half health or like a quarter health. So maybe a battery would help you in that situation. I totally understand that. So I don't I don't want to come across as if batteries are useless because they're definitely not. They're just not the be all end all of frontier defense. Then we have the sentry turrets and arc traps. And these things can make things so much easier on you. I've had more success putting arc traps closer to enemy spawns rather than closer to the harvester. Then again, some people have had different experiences. So experiment with them. See what is best for you see what fits your playstyle best and then go with that you can memorize the exact path that enemies take in a certain part of the map and literally put arc traps across that entire path so it makes them slow down every single arc trap they hit and it gives you a lot more time to destroy them and it just makes things easier on you they, they'll take more time to get closer to your harvester and that's always a good thing now when it comes to sentries I would suggest doing a lot of experimenting with where you place down your turrets do some testing try and figure out which spot gives you the most kills but also make sure it's a decently safe spot because I found some fantastic spots that would get me 10 kills at the beginning of every wave but then 20 seconds later they would always get destroyed and I'm gonna have to repair them and sometimes you don't have the time to get out of your Titan and repair them just because so much other stuff is going on so just be safe be smart with your turret placement and just if you find a good spot make sure somebody else is putting their turret in a different spot you don't want two turrets looking at the same exact path because now they're just fighting over kills it's better to have a sentry looking at every different possible lane so that you're all killing as many enemies as possible. And then we have Amped Weapon Boost, which is, there's nothing else I can really say, but buy it. It's only a hundred bucks, and it amps all of your weapons, and you might not be a pilot that often in Frontier Defense, but when, you, when you're when you forced to play as a pilot, those Amped Weapons really help. I'm not talking about killing AI with your actual primary gun, because for the most part, you do that in Wave 1, and afterwards, you're just using your AT weapons on Titans. But having an Amped Thunderbolt or an Amped Archer Missile means everything. It is so strong, it's definitely worth it to buy amped weapon boost now i'm not going to tell you to always buy nuke rodeo but definitely do some testing and some experimenting with it from now on every time you play frontier defense take note of when you see a lot of titans huddled up together just remember that because then in the future when you play on that same map and same wave again you know this is the perfect time to use nuke rodeo it's almost worth it to get out of your titan just to rodeo that one titan in the middle and destroy all of them i don't know if many people knew this i learned it that's like the second day of frontier defense but when you use nuke rodeo on a titan it doesn't just kill that one titan it kills everything else around them and it is a beautiful sight to see and your teammates will love you for it last but not least we have the harvester shield boost now i can't speak for everyone because everybody's at a different skill level it depends on who you're playing with what difficulty you're playing on what map you're playing on but if you feel like you're really going to need it at least have one person that has it and has good reaction times when i first bought this ability i played with it on stream and every single time our harvester got destroyed for any of you that were there on stream i always forgot to use it i was just never in the habit it was my first time playing frontier defense but now i always want it i love using it it's such a nice thing to have especially if a nuke titan actually gets through your defenses they're about to destroy everything but you have that harvester shield boost it makes your harvester invulnerable for what five seconds and that helps a lot the only drawback is that it's 
it's expensive. It's 1800 bucks. So you either have to coordinate with your team to see who has extra money to help you buy it, or you have to save up for a round and probably sacrifice not getting another defense. It's all up to you. When I'm match made with people I've never played with before, I can usually tell by wave two or three if we're going to need a harvest or shield boost. Just go off of that. See how much trouble or how much ease you have with the first two waves and see if anything actually gets through your defenses and destroys your shield or actually does damage to your harvester. If by wave two or three it happens a lot and you feel a little pressure, then it might be worth it to save up for that boost. Otherwise, you probably don't need it and you're better off buying some more arc traps or batteries or anything else that you feel is necessary. Finally, I have some miscellaneous things that I forgot to mention. Don't forget that you can pick up your sentry turrets or your arc mines. If you end up placing them in a bad spot or you throw them out by accident, you can walk up to them and press X on Xbox or Square on PS4, pick them right up and place them in a better spot. I didn't realize this until the second day. I was like, holy shit, this changes everything. Now, I mentioned this weapon probably 10 times throughout this video. How long has this been going for? 30 minutes. Holy crap. Anyway, the Thunderbolt is fantastic. It's not always the best weapon in multiplayer because it really shines when you shoot it at numerous titans that are huddled, huddled up together. Huddle, 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 huddle. But in Frontier Defense, there's always a bunch of titans huddled up together. So the Thunderbolt is always effective. It'll get you your titan back in 20 seconds flat. Now, when it comes to tacticals, I don't want to tell you what's the best, but the grapple hook is the best. Grapple boys, unite. Grapple is life. Grapple is love. Also, arc grenades are fantastic. Satchels are fantastic for taking down titans. Electric smoke can also be useful. Maybe even the fire start. I guess it really all depends on your play style. Just see what fits best. Do some experimenting. Now, when it comes to perks, the one thing I think is necessary or most useful is Titan Hunter. Most of us in multiplayer use low profile but that perk is completely useless because now we're fighting a bunch of AI titans and they don't care if we have low profile or not. They're not going to drop smoke when you rodeo them. So I really suggest switching over to Titan Hunter. Now this last tip, well actually it's not really a tip at all. It's just a reminder just in case you guys forgot about it because I did and I felt like an idiot. You do not need Tactical. I use Tactical in every single loadout in multiplayer, but it's completely worthless in Frontier Defense because we're not fighting player pilots. It's all just AI. So switch it out with something else that you feel would fit your playstyle best. I switched it out with Fast Reload and I also use Extended Mags on pretty much everything. So that is pretty much it. This video has gone on for way too long. If you are here to the end, say something in the comments so that I know. Say Watch Tone Die and I will know that you spent the entire 30 minutes with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you learned something today. I really really do. I spent a lot of time on this. I also had a lot of help from the community so I'll do my best to put as many of your tweets in this as possible again thank you so so much if there's anything that i missed anything that you think that's important that people that are trying to improve can actually learn from please please put it in the comments i want people to just get better i love this community i love this game and i would love to see everybody improve and just see some progress because that always feels good so again thank you for listening make sure you drop a like for me i'll see you later peace